Welcome to Voice of the Inland Empire, your weekly adventure into the who, what, where, and why of our local communities. And today we are coming to you from Charlie's Stars and Stripes in historic downtown Upland, one of my very favorite places to be. Great food, drinks, entertainment, and on the weekends, always live music. Today we are joined by two individuals representing the San Bernardino County Museum. Carolina Zadare, who is the Curator of Education, and David Myers, who is the Curator of Visitor Engagement and Exhibits. And I know that's all a mouthful, but at the end of the day, the San Bernardino County Museum is a true gem here in the Inland Empire, a place that if you've never been, you've got to check it out. And if you have kids or no kids, or even like kids, it's a place to bring the kids. It's truly uh, a wonderful place to spend an afternoon with the family. And be sure to check out our website at voiceoftheinlandempire.com where you'll see current shows and a full archive of past shows as well. We have a wonderful discussion coming up for you today, so don't go away. We will be right back. I love museums, always have, all different kinds of museums. I introduced my kids when they were very young to museums, and one of the first, and I have some very fond memories, was the San Bernardino County Museum. And if you didn't know we have one, we do, and shame on you for not knowing that. And we are joined today by Carolina Zadare, who is the Curator of Education. You know what I love about people that work in museums? Your names, your titles, I'll start with Curator. And really, no one has a clue what that means, but it's cool. So, <laughs> Carolina, um, tell us a little bit first, because this museum, I mean, I was taking my kids there, oh gosh, 20 years ago. So it's been around for a while. It has. So this museum actually started in Bloomington in 1952. I didn't know that. In and, a different location. Yes, and it was then transferred over to the county. Uh, so it started as a nonprofit transferred over to the, uh, the county and was eventually established uh, in Redlands, where it is today, uh, in 1974. Wow, and it is so cool. And you guys at the museum really do uh, an enormous outreach effort, uh, mostly for younger families and young people to, to educate. Uh, which is part of your title, so I'm going to take the wild guess you're involved in that somehow. So tell us a little bit about what people will find at the museum and the nature of it, and then about some of your programs. So uh, at the museum we have a variety of uh, really fun, immersive educational programs that we provide for school groups uh, and members of the public. One of the things, treasures we have, there is a live animal gallery where people can kind of get really close up close with the uh, variety of animals, some that live in our area, some that are similar to those who live in our area, and it's really uh, a very hands-on. Uh, Wait, so you have live animals there too? Yes. So you're now kind of a museum zoo combo. We're, we have a small live animal gallery. Where, I didn't know that. Yeah, and it's, there's a variety of animals, uh, reptiles, a few mammals, um, snakes, tarantulas, and it's a really fun uh, place to kids to kind of engage and, and you know, to spark their curiosity. Yeah, because what kid doesn't love insects and creepy crawlies? Yeah. And, and that, is, that is so cool. So you guys have things going on on a daily basis just for visitors, but it sounds like you do a lot of groups. Yes, so uh, we received this past year about 17,000 students for the school year. Wow. Uh, at the school, a variety of kids. Uh, we're a resource to the community and to teachers. So it's a really, it's really fun part of my job that I get to work with kids. And I'll tell you, that's how I originally got introduced to the museum. This was years ago. My son was in Cub Scouts. And I don't know if you guys still do it with all of the legal stuff, but it was an over, a sleepover in the museum. Yeah. And I want to put in a formal complaint. Your floors are really hard. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure they still are to this day. Uh, but yeah. It's Probably really great for walking on, but not so good for sleeping on. No, no, I'm pretty sure they're But hard. I can tell you the kids had a blast. And then the next day we went out back, and I don't know if you still do it, but they had some arts and crafts stuff going on in the back of the 
of the museum outside. Yeah, we still have, provide a variety of fun, uh, you know, engaging activities for visitors for the series of programs that we do throughout the year. You know, in spring we get a huge lineup of public programs, and it's a fun way to engage kids and learn through through a fun craft. But they're learning a really interesting concept about either bugs or trains or, you know, uh, history. See, and to me, there's no better way to learn than through play. Yeah. You know, it's kind of secret learning. They don't even know they're learning, but they walk, they go back home going, wow, I did this really cool thing. And they're now filled with more knowledge, more information, but more importantly, more wonder. Yes. Yeah. So when someone comes in, say, you know, I have young ones and I, I bring them to the museum. What, and I know your exhibits are always changing. And we'll be talking to David Myers later in the show, who's the curator of exhibits there. But generally speaking, what are the kind of things that we see there? Um, well, we have a huge uh, collection of uh, paleontological collections, so a wide range of fossils from um, the Ice Age era. Uh, so it's really interesting them to see one of the most interesting things they'll see when they go into Earth Science is a giant uh, uh, replica of a mastodon. Oh, so it's very cool. like kids are just so like mesmerized by that, and it's like a popular. Uh, uh, area where people take pictures, um, but there's a lot of hands-on things. One of the things that people really go for is uh, a lot of it is the animals, to see those out of animals, to see uh, the huge um, mammals that we have in our biodiversity hall. There's just a variety of things for kids to kind of see, be mesmerized, and kind of get excited and realize that museums aren't are really places to explore and engage and have fun. I know. I, for some reason, most people or many people think that museums are boring. And I suppose there are some that are boring. But a museum like yours, especially because it's not just looking at stuff, but it's touching, it's engaging, uh, is, is really a good time. Now, if someone wants to get information about the museum or maybe upcoming exhibits or if you have any special education days or arts and crafts days or, or anything, is, do you have a website? Yes, yeah, so it's sbcounty.club slash museum um, and they can check out the events that are coming up, which there's a very busy lineup uh, of events that we do. Now, are, how are you guys funded? Uh, we are a county institution, so we're government funded by uh, the government. The, County government. The so we're, county. A, we're a department within the county. Okay. Mm -hmm. And is there an admission fee? Yes. So for adults, it is ten dollars. Um, children ages five through twelve uh, through twelve is uh, five dollars. Uh, and then we provide a variety of discounts for seniors, students, uh, military members, and uh, people with uh, ET cards. Um, get in for a reduced rate of one dollar per wow. uh, per person, up to nine people. Yeah, so it, it's it's a, it's affordable, and what a great way to spend an afternoon with the family. And what are the museum hours? Uh, the museum is open from nine to five. Mon 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 sorry, Tuesday through Sunday. Tuesday. So through we're Sunday. open uh, six days of the week. And and if someone wants the address, they can go to the website. But you're right in Redlands. Yes, we're right off the freeway, right off um, on California. So it's really easy for. Uh, people to explore us. Usually people pass by us. But. Yeah. If you're driving the 10 freeway, you've gone past you a million times. Oh, yeah. Well, Carolina, thank you for joining us and telling us a little bit about the educational programs. Now we're going to bring on David and find out some more about the current and future exhibits coming up. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Don't go away. More of this conversation is yet to come. We will be right back. Hi, I'm Ron Stark, known as the voice of the Inland Empire. We've been on the air for almost 20 years, interviewing and discussing important people, places, and things in the IE. Our show was recently covered by Inland Empire magazine. Check us out on Charter Cable or visit our website at voiceoftheinlandempire.com or on Facebook or YouTube by searching Voice of the Inland Empire. Welcome back, and we are coming to you from one of my favorite places in the world, Charlie's Stars and Stripes, right in the heart of historic downtown Upland. And this is one of my favorite places in the world. Something going on almost every night, uh, daily food specials, and on the weekends, live music. What more could you ask for? 
fact, many of the nights you'll find me at the bar having dinner and a drink. And if you do, come by and say hello. We are now joined by David Myers, who is the curator of visitor engagement and exhibits. Nicely done, yes. I love that title. I love the visitor engagement part. Right. But I'm curious, do you just do engagements or do you do weddings too? I don't do weddings. Not I can. Just... I can if you're in the market. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> but just engagements. No, but seriously, um, you're the guy who figures out what we are going to see in the museum. Is that right? Essentially, that's my job, right. Uh, I'm in charge of the exhibits department, uh, so I make sure exhibits are interactive and participatory, uh, as well as educational and entertaining. And you know, it's interesting you say that, because in the old days, in my, in my youth, right. you know, museums weren't really interactive. In fact, the admonishment you got from your parents before you went in was what? Don't touch anything. Right. Be quiet. Stay still. Don't touch. Right. Keep right. Your, my parents made me keep my hands behind right, my back. Right. Exactly. And they duct taped them so they'd stay there. Right. They didn't. Just kidding. <laughs> but this is a whole new world. It, it really is. And we found in the museum community uh, that the more people can interact with objects, with exhibits, the more they learn and the happier they walk away. So give me a sense of some of the exhibits. Carolina told us a little bit about it, but if you were to come today, Tell me about what is always there, what's temporarily there now, and some of the cool stuff you have coming. Yeah, so we have, uh, we're a cultural and natural history museum, um, so we have some wonderful uh, permanent exhibits um, on Ice Age fossils, uh, on minerals. Now, from our area or just in general? From our area. From our area? Yeah, so we really like to focus on our region specifically, which is what makes us really unique. And you know, that's cool for kids to go there and, and go back in time, but in this location, because there was prehistoric life in this area. Uh, and to see some of that on display, I mean, how, how just mind wandering that is. It's amazing and, and kids love it. In fact, my office is right by the hallway that leads to our replica mastodon. So every day, all day, I get to hear the gasps of wonder of kids, you know, as kids walk towards the mastodon and discover it. So it's really, really interesting. It's really fascinating. And, and didn't I read several years ago, there was, a, there was a development going and a huge discovery of mastodon bones somewhere in this area? You know, so I'm not the paleontologist, but that does sound right. Um, so there, there are a lot of uh, Ice Age fossils in this area. And, and then what about Indian fossils? Yeah, so we, we do have Native American uh, objects. We have a very large uh, Serrano basket collection, which is actually on display right now as one of our permanent exhibits. Uh, it's an exhibit called Sacred Earth, and that's in our history hall. Nice. Okay, so that's your permanent stuff. Right. What's, what's there right now that is non-permanent, that is rotating? Sure, so we just opened three brand new exhibits uh, in the last few months. Uh, Gone Camping is a really wonderful exhibit. Uh, that's in our Hall of History, and it's really hands-on. Okay, what is Gone Camping? So Gone Camping is about camping in San Bernardino County uh, and the history of it. Uh, but what makes it really interesting is that it's really hands-on, really interactive, mainly for kids, although adults can love it too. Uh, but you can climb in a tent, and this is all indoors. You can climb in a tent, you can listen to nature sounds, build a pretend campfire oh, it's really neat all right so i have a connection for you okay reach out to parks mojito over in parks department we recently finished doing a series of videos five minute videos right. on all of the county parks throughout the region wow. and those that have camping we talked about the camping there those that are just day parks we talked about that and that would be they've got all the videos that would be fun to tie into your exhibit it really would be and we love to work with other county departments other partners other organizations we love to bring them in and partner with them on exhibits that's cool okay so go camping because i i raised the kids camping we right. love it what's what's one of the other new exhibits uh so we have two more so in our uh, uh shuling gallery we just opened an amazing exhibit called mechanized magic 40 years of garner Holt productions uh and it's about obviously garner Holt productions and they make animatronics uh, for theme parks and organizations throughout the world and they're they're right here in San Bernardino County and they're the biggest uh, organization of their uh, of of their kind so they have 5,000 animatronics across the world and for people that don't know like you said they are right here in San Bernardino County have been here forever they're actually one of the larger employers right. in the county and they are the largest animatronics they are. maker manufacturer in the world they are and you know, 
anyone that's been anywhere from Disneyland to Chuck E. Cheese, yeah. and it, animatronics are amazing. And as computers get, yeah. everything gets more and more lifelike. And the story is so amazing because Garner Holt literally founded the company as a teenager in his backyard. Um, so it takes you through the history of it, but it also takes you through the production of an animatronic figure, which is really fascinating from the sketch to the end product. And it also tells the story that, especially good for the kids, that anything we set our, our sights on as a dream, we do have the ability to accomplish. Absolutely, it's so inspiring. It is. And what's the third new exhibit? So the third exhibit is Minerals Rock, Unearthing the Human Element. So it's a really interesting new mineral exhibit located in our Hall of Earth Sciences. Uh, and for people that just love minerals, they love gems, um, it's a great place to come see some really beautiful minerals from our collection. Well, can we take any home? You can't take any home, Darn. but we do have some rocks for sale in our gift shop. Oh, okay. So I can well, point you in the right direction. That's almost as right. good. Yeah, I'm looking for some diamonds. <laughs> um, so those are the three that just started. So now how long will they be there? Um, so Garner Holt, I believe, runs through uh, for a few months. Um, uh, gone camping and minerals are semi-permanent. So they're going to be there for a while. All right. And then... I don't know if you can let the cat out of the bag. Anything cool coming up? We do have some wonderful new exhibits coming up. We have uh, our Colorful Culture, which is a Hispanic Heritage Month exhibit with our partners from the Inland Empire Latino Art Association. We also have a wonderful, really inspiring new exhibit uh, called Footsteps to You, Chattel Slavery. Uh, and that mm. opens in a few months in our Fisk exhibit. That is so cool. Well, you know, hats off to you and, and, and every, all the curators for making museums no longer the place where parents have to duct tape their kids hands behind their backs uh, where kids can go and and truly be kids and learn accidentally along the way absolutely it really is our pleasure so if someone wants more information i know carolina mentioned it but the the website san bernardino county gov slash museum all right and there they can find information on current exhibits, upcoming exhibits. Right. And to me, one of the more fascinating things is it's, it really is a great place to take a group, whether it's uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, um, Indian, whatever, any, any of the youth groups. Uh, schools, classes, you guys are big on that. It is. It's a wonderful place to take a group. We have discount group rates that people can find online, um, and it's just a wonderful place. And then, um, do you guys do anything? I know you're, you're county funded, but do you, other than admission, is there anything else you guys do to raise funds for the, for the museum? So we work with our museum association, which is a private, which is not for profit. Um, and they raise funds for us throughout the year. Um, and they put on what's called the Bucky Ball, which is their big fundraiser once a year. Uh, and it's a blast. It's a great fundraiser. Um, and, and they do a really nice job for us. And then what about volunteers? Someone says, you know, like me, my kids used to love it there. I'd love to help out Absolutely. somehow. We love volunteers. We're always looking for volunteers for uh, jobs all over the museum. Um, and again, you can get on our website for that and contact the Curator of Education. All right, I, I want to volunteer in the gym area. No, they'll be safe, I right. promise. <laughs> no, just trust me on this. All right, well, David, thank you so much for joining us and to Carolina as well. And um, I look forward to bringing the cameras on location one of these times and really showing off your wonderful museum. Thank you, we can't wait. Don't go away. More of this discussion is yet to come. We'll be right back. Voice of the Inland Empire is on location today, and we are visiting with our own personal health guru, Dr. Ray Peavy of the Arcadia Chiropractic Center here in Arcadia. And Dr. Peavy, you do chiropractic services, and we'll talk about that. And I think most people generally know what that is. But you also offer a whole range of holistic practices. Tell us a little bit about what some of those entail. Well, Ron, I think most people think chiropractors just treat sore backs and bones. But realistically, we are a, a doctor that treats the body as a whole. So consequently, holistically, I treat conditions like migraine headaches, digestive problems, uh, even uh, asthma conditions, just to name a few. One other thing that we're doing quite successfully is treating this, uh, this very, very grave condition called peripheral neuropathy. And I say grave because it changes a person's lifestyle so dramatically, such as 
limiting uh, how they can balance themselves, uh, drive a car, and it's all related to their feet and their hands. They're losing the ability to feel things and uh, understand what the environment's trying to tell them. So it's a, a really life-changing situation. And you also do some work with fibromyalgia, which is we're hearing more and more about these days. Yeah, fibromyalgia is an autoimmune condition. What I mean by that is it's the body's immune system literally attacking the body. And it's really related to a lot of factors like stress and dietary habits. Uh, but also it can be a, a problem with a short circuiting of the nervous system in the body and how the brain is not communicating with the different parts of the body. So in essence, we are going to go in and change that and, and reestablish those connections. And you know, I think it's important to understand that the holistic approach is a non-traditional or non-Western, non-drug approach. And I'm not knocking, you know, Western medicine. I mean, sometimes those things are required. But the human body has such amazing healing powers on its own if it's kind of pointed in the right direction. Well, we've had all kinds of success stories. Uh, we've had patients come in here who literally uh, could not get pregnant uh, for literally years. And when we reestablish that, that uh, nerve connection to that part of the body, then the body can communicate and lo and behold, a pregnancy occurs. We have children that come in here uh, literally living off of steroid inhalers and we start adjusting their spines and reestablishing that connection to the lungs. And consequently, we see that they don't need inhalers anymore. So this is that organic connection that is much more than just treating sore backs and bones that I think a lot of patients or individuals out there have to really find out about. Especially today, it's, it's really a, an approach where people are looking for natural ways to treat. And don't get me wrong, if I need a, a life-saving drug or, a, or surgery, count me in, but let's find if there are other options available. And I agree, and I think people are more and more starting to understand that. You know, like you said, if I need something life-saving, I'm not opposed to doctors, but I am a big advocate of trying to find those natural approaches first and allowing the body to do what it does so well. And that's so true because uh, the typical patient we see coming in here in many cases is a medical failure. They've tried traditional uh, physical therapy, they've tried uh, medications, They've tried uh, surgeries and to no avail, they're still having the same problems with their back or their neck or they're having dysfunctional knees. And, and, and really they're looking for hope. They're looking for, is there anything else available? And, and gosh, many times we're able to deliver on that. And then the smart ones often, or maybe should, start here first rather than going through the medical failure first. So doctor, we're gonna be joining you here at your office uh, every week for the next several weeks. And I'm looking so forward to some of the things you're going to be able to share with us and teach us. But if someone wants more information about your chiropractic care, your holistic practices, anything we've talked about, how do they get a hold of you? Well, that's a good question. Uh, you can go on our website at arcadiachiropracticcenter.com. It has all the information about our services. Uh, it has testimonial videos. And I notice even classes? Yes, we do healthcare classes. Uh, every chiropractic patient is required to attend a healthcare class, and it will talk about a lot of the things that we talked about today. And we also have our peripheral neuropathy uh, seminar where you can find out more information about this condition that we treat. So the website and then phone number? Phone number is 626-447-4442. I have a front desk staff that will be more than happy to answer all your questions. And I'm even uh, available to take a phone call as well. Oh, that's awesome. Well, doctor, thank you. And I look forward to learning more about your practice and healthy ways that we can live. Thank you very much. Don't go away, we will be right back. What's Upland is on location again, and today we are joined, or we are joining, Matt Shane from G&G &G Lamp Working right here in historic downtown Upland. And, you know, I got to be honest with you. I've been looking forward to this interview for some time because I am just enamored with what I'll call the magic of glass blowing. How you guys get the shapes and the colors and the... 
It's amazing. So tell me a little bit about your history. What got you into this? Most kids don't grow up going, I want to work with glass. Um, what got you into it? And a little bit about your store here. So originally, I started when I was about 18 years old, um, looking around, asking as many friends as possible, you know, where can I start doing something like this? And the main reason I started <laughs> was just because I'm a super pothead. I mean, you can tell by what I make, but you know, always walk into a shop and I would ask like, how does this stuff get made? I have no clue. And eventually I met this guy named Chris Clark, who actually is now my manager here at G&G Lampworking. He started me off on 4th of July about, f excuse me, five years ago actually, today. Um, and ever since then, I've just been slowly working my way up this ladder of gone to Northern California, Berkeley, all the way up to Seattle, Las Vegas, um, Colorado, Hawaii, everywhere in between, learning from as many different glass blowers as possible. And then once I was done around up there, because up there there's glass blowers every couple hundred square feet. Really? Compared to down here where it's almost non-existent. So why be a small fish in a big pond? I'd rather be the big fish in the small pond. Absolutely. And have my own shop down here. So I came down here about three years ago, opened up my shop, went through as much red tape with the city as anyone <laughs> wants to deal with, and now we're here. So I see a variety of items. You mentioned um, cannabis, and I see that you make items for that, but that's not all that you make. Absolutely not. Although I will admit that the smoking devices are the main seller here, we do like to do other things such as goblets, staffs, um, pendants, marbles. I see some awards. Absolutely. The first place award is for my chlor uh, chloronica orchid. Sorry, it's a word I made up. <laughs> um, it won first place at the non-functional show down at Pacific Art Glass um, last year in September. Wow. And the third place winner is third place in functional glass art, which means it's a, um, a pipe. And... Um, it won third place in its functional category. Now, along with making things here, are you just a, and I don't mean just, but do you only distribute or do you sell? If someone was to walk into the store, could they buy something from you? Absolutely, we sell to anyone who would walk in. Obviously, you need to be 21 or older to buy anything functional, but if you're younger, we will still sell you a pendant or a sculpture piece, as long as it's something that you know isn't gonna come back to bite us. Now, what if I had something in my mind could you guys create it? Absolutely, within reason, of course. There's obviously limits Limitations. to what we can do. <laughs> but within reason, yes, we can pretty much create anything your mind can come up with. That That is amazing. And I just may do that. I mean, and I'd love to have more time with you in the future to understand how you get the different colors and how they're mixed and blended. And it's just an amazing art form. For anyone that wants to come by and check you out, uh, give us your address and then do you have a website? I do not have a website at the moment, but we are working on one. It should be ready within a month or two's time. But our address here is 223 North 1st Avenue in Upland, California, zip code 91786. All right, and if you want to get a hold of them until they get a website, visit our website at voiceoftheinlandempire.com and we'll make sure to get you in touch with Matt and his team. Matt, I'm already thinking about what I'm going to have you custom make for me. Well, I look forward to making it for you. So <laughs> once you're ready, just let me know and I will get right on it. I will do that. And thank you for watching another episode of What's Upland.